It's been over two years since I started this channel, of where I first was making videos about scholarships. Over the years, people have told me via YouTube comments, emails, and through social media that thanks to my videos, as well as personally helping them edit their scholarship essays, that they were able to receive $5,000, $10,000, and even full-ride scholarships. These students came from as close as where I live in Texas, Arizona, North Carolina, to as far as Nepal, India, Canada, Australia, Hong Kong, and the DR Congo in Africa. And over time, I've been able to win a couple more scholarships for myself. However, my scholarship process has changed over the years from my last three uploads. So now, I'm here to share with you how I'm still winning scholarships, 20 so far and counting, and how you too can win. This is a limited short series called The Scholarship Algorithm. So this is the first episode, first chapter of this series that I call The Scholarship Algorithm. And today for this video, I will be sharing with you all how I was able to win several scholarships that I wasn't eligible for. $5,000 total. Okay, now let me give you like a bit of a background regarding these scholarships. Um, one of the scholarships was from an Asian American organization in Texas of where it was mainly uh, Chinese American and Taiwanese American citizens who were over that particular foundation. And then another scholarship I got was from a African American male fraternity. And then the last scholarship that I recently just got back in um, September of 2019 was a scholarship from Future, the rapper. It was $2,000 for that. So in total from those three scholarships that was a total of $5,000 in scholarship money and for those three scholarships two I technically would have thought I wasn't eligible for because I didn't fit the demographic. One organization was mainly looking for applicants and recipients to be of course Asian or East Asian in particular and I am totally not that and then the other organization like I said was from a black male fraternity it wasn't like a sorority for black women or anything but surprisingly I still got that scholarship as well as other people who were also female and some who weren't even black there was one guy who also got the scholarship he was Hispanic Latino and since he also had out of all the applicants the highest GPA he had a 4.0 um, he ended up also getting an iPad from the fraternity. I had the second highest GPA, it was a 3.9. Still a bit salty about that, could have had an iPad, but it's all good. And then the scholarship that I got from Future, the rapper, that was a whole story time video. That scholarship, at first, I kind of really was ineligible for because the scholarship criteria, it was saying that in order to receive the scholarship, you have to be from a, a university of where Future will be having his concert that night and so he, his concert was taking place in Austin so if I went to a school like UT Austin for example um, it would make sense for me to apply for it but I took the time to go ahead and email the people over the scholarship and say hey I know um, I'm not from a university within the Austin area however is it possible for me to still apply for this scholarship because I go to a school that is still within Texas. I could always like, if I win, drive down there, find a ride down there, down to Austin so I can get my scholarship. And the person who was who I was emailing back and forth with, she said, that's fine. I applied for the scholarship at like 3 a.m. in the morning, almost didn't apply for it. It was due the very, it was due like nine hours from then at noon. And so I applied for it at 3 a.m went to bed and then like less than 48 hours later um, I got an email at like 9 a.m. in the morning saying hey congratulations Carlin you won the scholarship in order to confirm that you are in fact the scholarship winner you have to be down in Austin that very night to confirm that you in fact are the winner and you would also be able to go to Future's concert and take a picture with him along with a guest and so <laughs> I had less than 24 hours to figure out transportation because I don't have a car. I had less than 24 hours to figure out transportation on how I was going to get from Denton, Texas all the way to Austin, Texas, which is like a five hour drive in between. So what I did was I took a, whatchamacallit, a lift 
from my school to Grand Prairie, Texas, and then from there to Austin, and then from there, my cousin who lives in Austin, he picked me up, and then once I was in Austin, I went to the concert, had a good time, it smelled like weed. Um, I think I'm allergic to weed or something because my eyes started tearing, I don't know, and that one was $2,000, which I'm forever grateful for and I even got to take a picture with Future which was pretty cool lasted like two seconds whatever but yeah I went through this whole adventure in one day just to get a scholarship yeah where was I going with this uh fuck sorry to interrupt mid video but I just wanted to say that this video that you're seeing here is one of a series. If you want me to send you a PowerPoint PDF version of this entire series rather than waiting for each video to upload and take notes from, I can send you that. All you have to do is fill out this form and make your payment. Then I will email you the entire presentation that covers all the videos seen in this series. Also, I offer a service called Scholarly of where I personally help people edit their scholarship essays. A lot of the people I work with don't have the best English or grammatical skills, so that's where I come in. And prices for that start at just $25. And lastly, I wanted to plug in here my GoFundMe. This is mainly for raising funds for when I study abroad in Tokyo, Japan this summer. But if you want to donate to help with that, my main education expenses, or just to show your appreciation for what I've been doing through these videos, then please do. Also, you'll see on there two really cool original songs I made with visual videos that pay homage to mainly Japanese video games and anime that shaped my childhood. Anyways, all of what I mentioned will be linked down in the description box down below. Okay, back to the video. Yeah, I just wanted to say this to say apply for scholarships that you think you're ineligible for or you think that you don't fit their target demographic. Because I think a lot of times when we're applying for scholarships, we kind of we kind of limit our options and automatically assume that we're not qualified to apply for a scholarship. And this and this doesn't just go for scholarships. This also goes for like jobs, internships, everything. Apply for things even when you think that you do not fit their demographic or that you would automatically be ineligible because of your background, because of your physical appearance or whatever it may be because had I maintained that mindset that I shouldn't apply for these scholarships, I wouldn't have gotten them. So, so when you're looking for scholarships online or wherever else, and you see scholarships that say of where the scholarship committee they're looking for, they're specifically looking for applicants who major in this specific field, who are from this specific demographic or gender or whatever, still try and apply for those scholarships because you never know. Now, I will say this much, do not be that person to act like something that you are not because I remember there was this girl a couple of months ago on Twitter um, she wasn't like even indigenous Native American and she ended up getting a scholarship from this Native American organization and she was like oh my gosh they want me to personally receive my scholarship should I put on a fake tan so I can look Native American and that's just that's disgusting don't be that type of person who has to fake what you're not and also if you're someone who like i don't know took a dna test and you found out you're, that you're like two percent black three percent native american don't be that person to say oh well since i found this on my dna test i can apply for this scholarship because i am of that demographic i mean yes that may be in your dna but if you never really identify it as that until now and you're just wanting to identify it identify as that certain ethnic or racial background just to get certain opportunities and you're doing it for the wrong reason. Do not be that type of person. But anyways, just make sure that you take the time to apply for scholarships that you do not think that you fit the demographic for because I'm telling you from multiple successful opportunities that I've had with three different scholarships, two of which required um, scholarship interviews if you ever find yourself having to do a scholarship inter interview I made a whole video about that a couple years back back in 2017 you can go and watch that when you want to but yeah apply for scholarships that you think that you wouldn't win because I did and the thing about that also one thing I want to say about that is that um make sure that you take the time to actually ask the people over 
running the email, the contact information for that specific scholarship that even if you are of this background, can you still apply? And also with these type of things, don't be afraid to go above and beyond because if you don't fit their main target criteria, you can always try to supplement and make up for that. So for example, with my job, my current job, um, on the initial application for the job, it didn't require certain certain things for me to mention, but I went ahead and took the time to also mention those things within like an email or an extra page just to show them just how qualified I was over anyone else who was um, applying for the scholarship, I mean applying for the job. And with this job, I ended up being hired the very next day, so I know what I'm talking about here. So yeah, just take the time to go above and beyond. So one of the key takeaways that I've learned from these scholarships that I was quote unquote ineligible for is that you have to uh, show relatability. Because if they're specifically generally looking for a certain demographic of people and you don't fit within that, you have to, you have to try and be relatable in some sense. For example, when I was going through my scholarship interview with the Asian American organization, um, I made sure to try and be relatable and so one of the things that I said was um, that at the moment I was writing this book of where the main character was um, East Asian, a Korean woman in particular, and they really showed interest in that because you know, yeah. And I wasn't necessarily trying to pander or anything, I just wanted to show that I was already somewhat familiar with their culture and with their customs and I also mentioned how much I appreciated watching all of these different East Asian cinema and arts from like Shin Yun for example, um, Chinese dramas, I watch a lot of that and also Taiwanese dramas and I especially watch like Korean dramas so I made sure to mention those things and I think by mentioning those things as well as all the other things that I'm capable of doing what I have been doing that was one of the deciding factors as to why they chose me for the scholarship and as for the scholarship that I got from the black male fraternity I knew that with that specific organization they really were um, they really stressed how important education was a higher education so I made sure within my interview to talk about all of my education advances and what I plan on doing with my career in the future and of course they really like that so you just have to really when you when you're going in for a scholarship interview or if you're writing your essay for a scholarship and an, an application you really have to think who is your target audience because if you as you are presented don't necessarily fit within the demographic that they're looking for you have to try and make up for that so that they can give you basically an exception you know so yeah that's basically my key takeaways from that anyways that's about all i have to say regarding that topic in my next video though which will be this friday on friday february 21st 2020 i will be uploading a video of where i will be reading to you guys the scholarship essay that helped me win the scholarship from future so look forward to that so you know how I've been able to construct my essays in such a way of where I've been able to win so many different scholarships, 20 and counting. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and of course share this YouTube series with um, those who are looking for scholarships, whether that's students or parents. And also take the time to watch the rest of the series which will be uploading every Tuesday and Friday. And also if you happen to win a scholarship thanks to the advice in my videos then please let me know in the comments down below or through email or DM on one of my social media platforms. Anyways, bye!